Hello and welcome. Since I started doing these reviews, I've had a few requests to do things that are more modern or not directed at children, or hell, just more things that I like. Well, let's do that then. This is Snatch. Released in 2000 and directed by Guy Ritchie, Snatch is very much the spiritual successor to Lock, Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, a 1998 movie by the same director. While it's not actually a sequel, both are Mockney London gangster movies, and Snatch does share quite a few actors with Lockstock, most notably Jason Statham and Vinnie Jones. Since we're looking at a Mockney gangster film, I've got my Mockney gangster bingo card right here, so let's dig in. The film centres around two main storylines that tie together throughout the movie. As it opens, we meet Turkish and Tommy, unlicensed boxing promoters and the centre of the first storyline before segueing nicely into the second, the theft of an 84 carat diamond in Antwerp about a week earlier. I have to say I really like the way this sequence is done, especially the way it cuts between one character and another. At first glance it looks like a credit roll, but that actually happened over the diamond robbery. This is just a character introduction, and since there are so many characters in this movie that are all instrumental to the plot, it's really nice to get a brief introduction to them all at once. We see Frankie Fourfingers putting the stolen diamond into a secret compartment in his briefcase as he prepares to travel to the United Kingdom. You know, I think it's probably going to take more than that to get it past the scanners at the airport, but maybe they're planning to bribe someone or something. Only problem is there's no real indication of that. Anyway, Frankie gets told by his nameless accomplice that if he wants a gun in London, he should go and see Boris the Blade, who'll get one for him. In London, Turkish and Tommy are talking about getting a new caravan to act as the boxing office. Turkish gives the money to Tommy and instructs him to pick up a new caravan from the campsite. Before he leaves, we find out that Tommy's recently started carrying a gun. The reason for this is another boxing promoter named Bricktop, a man known for killing people and feeding them to pigs. Ooh, psychopathic villain, that's on me bingo card. It's also revealed that there's a fight arranged between Gorgeous George, Turkish and Tommy's main boxer, and one of Bricktop's boxers. At this point, the movie takes a moment to introduce some more plot about the diamond. Turns out that Frankie's accomplice from before is actually Boris's brother. He calls Boris, inexplicably speaking in English, while Boris speaks in Russian, and asks him to have someone steal the diamond from Frankie, telling him Frankie's gambling problem may help. For a stereotype. Check. Meanwhile, Frankie talks to a man in New York who he intends to sell the diamond to. This is Cousin Abby, and he admonishes Frankie to stay out of the casinos before calling Doug the Head, his cousin, and a big man in the diamond trade. Frankie buys a gun off Boris and in exchange is asked to put a bet on the fight coming up before we cut back to Gorgeous and Tommy heading into the campsite which turns out to be populated with pikeys. Huh. Pikey, a pejorative term for an Irish gypsy, especially one involved in illegal or antisocial behaviour. Well, now we know. We meet Mickey and find out that one of the problems with dealing with pikeys is they speak in an impenetrable accent. It's probably a testament to how many times I've seen this movie that apart from a couple of lines, I can understand absolutely everything that Mickey says. Mickey sells the caravan to Tommy, which promptly comes off its wheels. Tommy tries to get a refund, but Mickey refuses until he gets his gander up and offers to give the money back if Gorgeous can beat him in a fight. Gorgeous gets a few hits in before Mickey lays him out with a single punch, and the scene ends with Tommy worrying that if Gorgeous doesn't wake up, and soon, they'll be buried together. At this point, I'd like to take a moment and say that while this movie paints travellers in a very dark light throughout the entire movie, it's not a view I share, since I've never really met any. It'd be wrong to judge an entire subset of the population based off Mockney gangster movies, in the same way I don't think that all Londoners are criminals. Anyway, we meet Vinny and Sol, who run a bent pawn shop. Untrustworthy fence. Nice. Vinny has recently done a deal with some gypsies, no prizes for guessing who, in which they threw a dog, which promptly escapes out the door as soon as Boris enters. He asks them to rob a bookies and steal Frankie's briefcase. After a brief scene where Frankie sells some smaller diamonds to Doug and tells him he's off to go bet on the fight, Vinny and Sol get ready to rob the bookies with their getaway driver Tyrone. Incidentally, the dog's back in this scene because it ran straight back to the campsite and Vinny found it. We see Frankie climbing into the back of his truck to change clothes, where he gets knocked out and trapped when Tyrone crashes into the back of it. 
They decide not to move the car because people will see the damage. And in a comedy moment, the dog swallows an entire squeaky bowl. <coughs> Meanwhile, at the arcade they run on the side, Turkish is berating Tommy for putting Gorgeous into a bare-knuckle boxing match when he has a proper fight in two days. He realises that they're going to have to tell Bricktop he won't get his fight, but Tommy wants to re replace the fighter. Unfortunately, all their other boxers are out of action, so they decide to ask Mickey to do it. Mickey says he'll do it for a caravan for his mother, and the fight is on, as long as they can convince Bricktop, that is. Heroes end up in debt to a psychopath. Only need really hard bastard to get bingo. Bricktop is naturally furious, as all the bets will have to be called off, and they'll have to take bets on the night. He does agree, though, as long as Mickey takes a fall in the fourth round. Turkish agrees, since he's got no choice, but it does rather beg the question as to why everybody was so certain Gorgeous was going to lose before this point. I suppose it's possible that Boris just lied to Frankie. Avi calls Doug and completely freaks out when he finds out that Frankie is gambling. He flies to London to make sure the diamond is safe, and Doug takes him to the fight. Meanwhile, Sol and Vinny see someone with a briefcase entering the bookies. They can't see how many fingers he's got, but they decide to get on with it anyway. Unfortunately, a completely unintimidated clerk tells them that all bets are off, and all she has is a bag of copper coins. They also realise the man with the briefcase has all his fingers, and the whole robbery is screwed. They try to leave, but they can't get the door open, assuming it's a security door. Tyrone comes to find out what the hell's going on, and reveals they were actually just pushing and not pulling, and all three get their faces on camera. As they're leaving, Tyrone notices Frankie getting out of his van, knocks him on the head, and piles him into the back of the car, since the briefcase is attached to his arm. And now we see the arranged fight, with Turkish telling Mickey he's going to go down in the fourth, an instruction he pretends to agree with before knocking out his opponent in a single punch. Again. Bricktop's obviously unhappy with this, as several people stop him to ask him what the hell has happened. Back at the pawn shop, Boris arrives to get the case. When it's revealed there wasn't any money in the bookies, he offers to pay them ten grand as compensation. But Vinny tells them he wants half the money from the diamond instead, mentioning Boris's name in the process. Boris shoots Frankie, saying he couldn't let him know his name, and demands the stone. Unfortunately, it's now back in the case, which only Frankie knew the combination to. This bit has always annoyed me. If Frankie's the only one who knows how to open the case, how did they get the diamond out in the first place? And why would they put it back? The only solution I could think of is they somehow persuaded Tommy to open the case by touch since he's got a tea cozy on his head, took the diamond out to show Boris, and then put it back in for safety. Because all that makes sense. Anyway, Boris cuts off Frankie's arm and takes it and the case off with him. Turkish returns to the arcade to get their money out the safe, and is surprised by Bricktop and his henchmen. He's told that Bricktop wants to use Mickey for a bare-knuckle boxing fight in a few days and that Mickey really must go down this time. Bricktop takes all the money out of Turkish's safe, and as he leaves, he tells his men to find the people who robbed his bookies. Turkish and Tommy head back to the campsite to find out that Mickey is coursing. Coursing is a blood sport where two dogs are set on a hare, and you bet as to whether or not the hare will get caught. At the same time, Bricktop and his boys review camera footage. The only one they recognise is Tyrone, and they head off to get him. Mickey agrees to fight in exchange for a much bigger caravan for his mother, but he's willing to do it for free if the boys can win a bet on the coursing. Turkish really doesn't want to bet against the pikey, but since he doesn't really have any other way of getting the caravan, he agrees and bets that the dogs will catch the hare. What follows is a really well done section, interspersing shots of the coursing with shots of Tyrone getting hunted down. The slow motion on the animals, which they kind of need in order to see the hare running properly, really adds to the tension of the other scenes, and while the hare escapes, Tyrone isn't so lucky. After being threatened with the fighting dogs, he agrees to tell Bricktop who robbed the bookies. As they leave, it's established that Tommy's gun doesn't work, and he vows to get another one off Boris. 